Let's um, get ready with entrepreneurs. We are a group of like-minded entrepreneurs interested in building our brands through networking and sharing of ideas and best practices. So we very much focus on marketing. However, our goal really is that holistic approach to building a sustainable business for um, people, planet, and profits. So how to build your brand on LinkedIn. Always starting with some cool usage statistics. In my research though, and there's a whole bunch here, you'll have access to this afterwards. Stats does give us kind of an indication of whether it's even right for us in, in a general sense. So there's a lot of people on LinkedIn. Um, a largest part, and I don't, Canada's not actually very high up in the stats of how many users there are. However, we only need really, you know, the right people to be on the platform. And so even if there's not a ton of them, 20 million is still quite a few for us to tap into. Um, very active users, they constantly have been increasing, especially since COVID, I noticed. 57% of LinkedIn's traffic is through smartphones. So just always um, make sure you're thinking about that. If you don't have your app already on your phone and with notifications, I do recommend it. Um, there are a few features on your phone that's not on, on the desktop too. And it just gives you that way to keep those notifications so that you can stay engaged, right? Um, skipping through maybe a few of these. Um, most people do use this to strengthen their professional network. I think that's pretty obvious for us. It's pretty evenly split, male and female. I don't know if that really matters anymore. Um, I did notice, and I think I quoted a much higher statistic of 75% or something of LinkedIn users under the age of 35. But give or take, around the 60%, there's a lot of younger people now using it, which to me is very encouraging. Um, a lot in creator mode, but also just the fact that these people are looking to be hired. They're looking to start their professional network, but there's still a lot of decision makers that have been there a long time. So you're getting people that are actually looking to be hired, and then you're getting those um, company professionals that are either looking to network, to sell, or actually to do the hiring. So it's a huge pool. Uh, a lot of decision makers, right? 65 million. Um, what was interesting is the 47% are actually small business owners. So if they're your target market, um, something to definitely consider. 17 million opinion leaders, most of which actually want to work with people that are thought leaders, right? They are interested in reach, having salespeople reach out to them through LinkedIn. And most importantly, they really want thought leadership content. So if that is two is a part of your strategy. Um, LinkedIn for B2B, someone who's going to hire you because of your expertise um, and someone who um, really wants quality professional content. LinkedIn's kind of the place to be. And this speaks a little bit more to maybe what I've already done, but LinkedIn post image gets two times engagement rate. Another piece when we come to content, which surprised me, video is on the decline. I don't know as why usage for video, you'd think it would be the other way around, but static images, photography still works, um, especially if it's you. Um, there's also, they just released this, is carousels. So now we can do carousels on LinkedIn, which is really great. And because up to recently, it's only been advertising that's allowed for carousels. So that is pretty cool. And slide decks. Um, seven slides is the stat to remember um, of, and there's some more details coming up, but seven slides in a slide deck is um, something that you can share as well. It, it performs quite well. LinkedIn posts with 1,900 to 2,000 words. I've seen a little bit of questioning in that, but give or take around that 2,000, I think it was more 1,500 to 2,000 I saw somewhere else too, but they actually want you to do longer posts and they are searchable. Um, titles, posts with titles of 40, 50 characters have the best performance rate. That was interesting. Um, this was pulling from some research that I will show you. Um, businesses that post weekly on LinkedIn see a two times growth in engagement. And there's a lot of little things to learn about what that means. Another really cool stat was if you 
um, go and comment on someone's post, you're more likely to see their post up in your feed. If you actually reach out to someone through direct mail, um, that person will see more of your posts. I got to remember which way that was. But direct, going actually through direct messaging and engaging one-on-one -on -one really does help with your newsfeed. Um, so there's a lot of little, little tricks to learn along the way, and that's presented in one of the research coming up. 60% of LinkedIn users actively seek industry insights. So that means people actually want to hear. If you have something valuable to say, please share it. They're looking for that that insights. So that is some cool usage statistics. So what are those steps to building your brand using it? It's it's pretty simple, not easy, but it's simple. So you do have to optimize your professional profile, create a company page. If you're a business owner, like we are, you definitely want a company page and you're going, well, it's not a huge market for me to be on LinkedIn. It just gives you credibility. It's that effort mm -hmm. to impact, right? You just create your page, you link yours to the page, you post relatively, and now depending on whether it's your market or not, um, how much and the type you post, but creating that company page is really, really helpful. Um, and then publish great content. We'll talk about great content build your network, and then engage with your network. So you actively go out and find people, bring them in, and then start talking to them. It's just, it's just like offline. We're just bringing it online. So those cool new features that I mentioned um, along the way, there's two really cool influencers um, that I found in. And so if you don't follow these guys, you might want to. Kevin Turner pretty cool. He has a post on, and he uses the hashtag new LinkedIn features, <clears throat> which I follow. This post, the link will be here and available. Um, it It's really hard to follow because he kind of mashes everything up and he pulls things from different people. So not the most user friendly, but he's someone I do kind of, he's usually the first one to kind of curate all these new LinkedIn features, which is neat. So the whole idea is if you go in there, you're going to actually see all these influencers that are on LinkedIn and it pushes it over to their LinkedIn page. So part of me showing you this is not only to follow Kevin, but also the fact that you'll find other LinkedIn influencers and to even inspire you to start using these things as, as an influencer on LinkedIn. So she would have used a specific hashtag for him to find. She also will mention people. And this person constantly sends out LinkedIn um, information too. So that push from him now has gotten her more traffic over to her LinkedIn page. And, and this can be used for pretty much anybody. Now, the one that I really found cool was this guy, Richard. Um, I just found him. They did unbelievable research for LinkedIn. One of the most valuable downloads you can do. Find it um, and download it. It's a PDF. You can actually watch it right in the um, LinkedIn feed. Um, I've downloaded it. And just every time I go through it, I'm learning something new. So there's a lot there that we definitely can't cover today. But he even talks about, you know, how he's the one I found out about how many slides, you know, when to do this, like down specifically, how often, when to do it. And he's got so much hours of research. So one of the best I've seen. And just from a content perspective, look at his, look at his post, right? He uses emojis. Some people go, oh, do you use emojis or do you not use emojis? The only challenge with using so many emojis is from an accessibility standpoint, the screen reader will read every emoji. So I do caution you in, in using this amount in any of your social posts. However, it looks really cool and it's obviously his thing. So that's what um, is really good. It's long form. It's broken out in points. He actually highlights the research. So if you are doing research, which is a really good piece of content to be able to share out through LinkedIn because it's that thought leadership, it has some longevity. It's, it's, um, it's helpful to people and it's, but a lot of work. 
So he's he's brought it up. He's given some highlights to inspire you to read further. He's mentioned all the people that have helped in the research. And then he actually even has some very specific call to actions here. So if you see at the bottom on the right hand side here, um, it's it's selling his services if you want him to be a speaker. It's like, that's really good. So he pulled it, put it at the end. But he also mentions about ring it on my profile. So if you guys know about that, it's a little ring notification. If somebody follows you and they hit that little ring, they will um, be priority in your newsfeed. So it's definitely something to call out to people. Kind of pulled it in from, I think, the YouTube um, space. So let people know that they should do that. And then also, if you see at the bottom, huge engagement. Um, and that you know, it's obvious it's working, right? So those are the analytics we can see. And remember when you do do slides, because you can slide through this right in in the, in the post um, and the thumbnails, it's really important. So make sure that you have a good thumbnail. The other stat that he mentioned was when you do do slides, make sure there's a face of you somewhere on it. Doesn't necessarily have to be on the thumbnail. And what I found fascinating was red, yellow, and black were three colors that do well. Again, just because it does well, when we talk about building your brand, you have to think of your brand first. If they're not your colors and you don't want to use them, please choose not to use them. There's so many other ways to build engagement, but it's always good, always good to know. And optimizing your professional profile, I'm going to run through mine and then so some key points to remember when you're in there and you've started your profile, cover photo, please put a photo up, keep it nice, keep it clean. It doesn't, it can just be about something about that represents you. For me, sustainability is really important. So I quite often will put those nature images up there. Don't put your logo, please don't put your logo and really busy distorted things that are hidden behind your profile keep it simple keep it nice it just looks good and it's one of those low effort to high impact um, visuals um, your photo make sure you have a professional photo up there if you are a content creator and you have put yourself up as a creator you could put a Ooh, I can't remember how long it is, but a little intro video that will show up behind your profile. So if anyone has visited my profile, they'll see as soon as it pops up, I actually will start to talk in my profile image. So that is a really cool feature and uh, definitely gets you some bonus points. Um, make sure your name is there, she, her, whatever, fill it out when you do edit your profile and then put some keywords of what you do because remember that underneath, I'm a communication strategist, digital marketing specialist, speaker entrepreneur. So those are the kinds of things that I want people to see right away. Because when people are, you know, when you see in the things who to connect with and you see the name and you see their headline underneath, that's going to be make or break if someone wants to even look any further. So that little piece underneath your name is really important. Don't just put your job title, put something that is significant. And then talks about underneath, you have the ability, might be just in creator mode, to actually put in certain hashtags that you're going to talk about. And again, those hashtags come up as um, searchable. So please do it. Location definitely helps. Um, your quick URL, it goes over to my website. So whatever website you want it to go to, please put it in there. And then open to, if you're open to hire, open to business, that's a link there. You can add, see the add professional profile section. So if you don't have certain sections, they're not going to show up. So you're going to see a whole bunch on mine. But if you're just starting out, you're not actually going to see all the sections. So when you do add profile section, you're going to see those new sections. Please fill them all out as many as you possibly can that makes sense. And then remember that little more little more drop down. So you'll see that there. You can actually build a resume, save it to PDF, all those great things, or even send it in a message. If you're you're trying to get a connection, maybe through someone else, like a second degree, because you can't connect with the first you have to get someone to introduce you. So maybe you go, hey, can you can you introduce me to this person? And you could share your profile right in the message. So that works out well there. 
providing services that's a service section that you can do. I'm going to show you what that is afterwards. Um, then take a skill quiz. If you want to do it, just remember those skill quizzes isn't, isn't for everybody and they're actually really hard. So, but do check it out if you are, especially if you're a creative, um, have a look. Project management, there's a few skills that are in there to look at. Now, you'll also notice that my URL in the top left-hand corner there is linkedin.com slash in slash Laura L. Dunkley. You actually have to customize that. Please do customize that. It takes two seconds and it, and it just looks really professional and much easier to share it out. So on the top right-hand corner there, it says edit public profile and URL. Just go in there, plug in your name, see if it's available and bam, you're done. Sorry, sorry, where was, oh, okay, I see it, yep. Yep, yep, do yeah. it, super simple. And I'm always about, you know, effort to impact. That one's a good one. So image profile, image cover image, um, your profile picture, public profile URL for sure makes uh, it's easy to do. Um, analytics, you'll see there at the top, that's only to me. You will have that available too, but it's fun to kind of see how well you're doing. Resources, again, is private to you, and that's where you can turn your creator mode on or off. If you're not a creator, you and really they're just looking for people that are going to provide creative content regularly. Um, if it makes sense to you, go in and look through the different options. Um, I'm not saying it's right for everyone. It just made sense for me. Then underneath that, featured pictures or featured articles. So as you post and go through things, you can actually select things to be in this feature. That way it's going to be right up the top of your profile. Now it can be something you've published before or you can actually pull it in from a new URL. So whatever that is, um, just put it up there. It, it looks good too. It builds out, kind of gives it some substance. And then this is the activity. This is gonna show up underneath. It just, just to let you know that it's there and it'll see all the things that you've done. So if anyone's coming to your profile, they're gonna see this. So this is where you wanna be able to keep this fresh. And I haven't expanded it. A really important section underneath that is your about section. So when you're filling out your profile, one of the most important things you can do is to fill out that summary section, that about section. Now, I have done a webinar in the past on tips on how to do that. We have a blog there, Guide to Using LinkedIn. Em, can you share that in the chat, that LinkedIn post? Because there's a bunch of things on there to get you started as well, plus a link over to that webinar. And it talks about kind of how to build out that about section. Just remember, people are going to look to see that. And in a high level, it's who you are, who you serve, you know, basically what you do and what you want people to do when they reach how they want to reach out to you. Maybe you're looking to become a board member. Maybe you're looking for a specific industry you're tapping into um, and then use some keywords. So make sure it's, you know, succinct to the point, um, but it's really actionable. So please fill it out and have a look at other people's about sections. That's one of the best ways to get inspired. People that are similar to you, your competitors, or similar style and how you want to be represented. Um, just have a look to see. Some people fill it out really well. Some people don't do it at all. But just fill it out. And then once it's up, it shouldn't be something you have to change a lot. Um, your experience, fill it out so that it is relevant. Now, this is where when we come to the company page, we want to make sure that your company has a page so that you can have it on your influencer. And so remember that, and this, this comes back in a question to us all the time, is what's the difference between the company page? When do I post on the company page? When do I post on, on my, prof, my, my professional page? Is it different? Is it the same? So just remember that your company, it's like its own person, right? Like it's a brand. It stands on its own. And when we talk about building your, your brand, it's kind of like your baby, right? Your business. You're going to separate it. You're going to be really together when you're started, but you're going to separate it. It's going to learn to stand on its own. So always move towards training that teenager to be an adult. So that's where it's keeping it separate almost as its own person. And then all those questions end up getting answered. So if you get into that mindset that it's its own person, you're the influencer, 
it's its business. It can stand on its own. You could potentially sell that business because you should always be thinking it needs to be independent, whether you do or not. So this is build your company page. Now as an influencer, you're going to connect because you technically work there. And then your logo's up in there. So when people come to your page, they're going to actually see, see, oh, Acorn Studio Marketing. Where do they work? What do they do? And now it's a funnel over to your page, which talks about the brand. And that's, I mean, there's a whole much more discussion, but really it's that simple. Just keep them separate. Pretend it's its own child. It's your child that you are going to train to have its independence one day. So keep it separate. And then the logo looks really great, right? Like it just keeps it uh, nice and branded. Education, licenses and certificates, put it in there. Don't put, you know, um, irrelevant education, but if it's relevant, put it in there. Licenses and certifications, um, lynda.com or LinkedIn Learning, click, um, links in there too. So if you do do that, it's, it's available. Um, the organizations would be volunteers or professional organizations that you're a part of. And then interests, that's all part of, it'll ask you, it'll take you through what you're interested in and who you follow. So make sure that when you follow people, that people are okay to see who you follow, because that does show up on your profile. Recommendations, this takes a little bit of effort, but please do go and look and ask and be proactive in doing recommendations through the, my webinar and that link, you'll actually see some tips on how to do it, but you can actually, you basically have to go out, ask them, write something up and say, Hey, this is for me at this point, we did work together. Could you recommend me for this? And so it's an invitation and you can always, they'll do it. You have the opportunity to get them to um, edit it and you still have to approve it before it goes up. So it's always a good thing to have and uh, looks good for credibility. And volunteering, add that in, your skills, um, and it'll take you through that when you're setting it up. Then it gets into services. Remember I mentioned about what do you offer? You have a chance if you're a service-based business to actually put in your services. So this is where to build up. It's kind of like your online CV. Right, So you can put in a portfolio link that goes over to your work. You can put um, a PDF up. I do believe the top one there of mine is a PDF. And then you can also link it over to um, a website. So we have a portfolio page also on our website. And then you get to say what kind of services that you provide. What's really important here is the fact that these are searchable. So if you're looking for a copywriter or you're looking for a photographer, it's actually going to show up in people's searches and more and more people are starting to, to look for freelancers and creators and business people on here or a business coach. So please take the time to, to fill that one out. And then as far as the professional services go, you LinkedIn is free, but there are also premium products. And I've played around on some of them, uh, played around on the career one. Interesting. Most of us probably aren't going to be in the career one, but we might be in the premium business or the sales navigator. So if sales are a core thing and you're really wanting to reach out to these B2B people, sales nav navigator has some pretty cool things. It's just going to cost you a bit, right? So you have to weigh out the cost. Try it for a month. I think it's free for a month. And then you can actually directly um, connect with people that aren't in your network. It also has a CRM capability. You can also track how well you're doing with the SSI tool. So it's the options out there. And this is that SSI tool and it just tracks how well you're doing. Eh, it's kind of a fun tool. Um, okay, company page. This is it. Simple, just go in. You have to have, you have to be in, on LinkedIn to be able to do this. And you have to have it set up so that you have an email with your company email. It's been a while since I've set this up, but you actually, so when you do go in and do your company page, something to do with that. So if you have any, it may have changed, but just remember you have to have um, a non Gmail email. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. If anyone's going to set up a new company page, it's been a little while, but uh, I do believe you do have to have um, a proper email for that. But you definitely, then you can go in and become super admin. You can also 
add people, other admins. So we are actually admins to different pages. Just remember as the owner, if you have a marketing agency or, or somebody helping you with that. Um, Emily, can you admit that person? Oh, maybe I have to, sorry. Um, so, so you actually will, should always be super admin. Um, don't ever get it so that someone else sets, if someone else sets it up, make sure you have access all the time. It's just, it's just good best practice so that you will have access even if you're not doing the page. So you're going to put your logo on there. You're going to do a branded cover image, just like you would have done on your professional photo, um, professional profile, and then make sure that you just fill it all out. It's going to cue you through what you have to do. It's a short blurb that you have to fill about out about who you are. You want to put a call to action, which is usually, you know, go over to my website or can be um, follow my page. Um, and then you start posting. So now the, always the question is, is what kind of stuff do you post on your company page and not on your influencer page? If it is company focused, and the company is doing it just like its own independent person, then start it on the company page, which would be, hey, we um, just released um, a new success story, or we just launched a new product, or um, here's a blog that we've posted on our website. All of those things are the company doing it. You as the influencer now come in, find that company page and it's actually on the company page it's going to ask you if you want to post it to yours so it actually makes it easy for you but if it if you miss that and you just want to come in and go hey this is a really cool post I want to share it you come in you take that and then you share it on your profile does that make sense and then you put your thought leadership behind it so that's you so always company first you get a whole bunch of analytics too and make sure you check in um, periodically for sure because that's how you're going to know what's working and what's not working. So that's the company page. If you do have product that you are selling, it's a relatively new feature, you can add them product pages to your website. So, but you have to have a product. It's not a soft product. Can't do digital downloads like us. It has to be a real product. Um, if it makes sense, um, know that that's available. So what's great content? Really, it has to stay within your brand like we talked about. Please be authentic. You really want to do that. Authentic without being overly personal. They want personal, but you really have to tie it back to your business. Um, so, so just be careful. It's not Facebook, but it also has to be very human. Um, informative and inspiring form of or inspiring or both um, you have to and consistently be up there and sharing it um, and then make sure that those engaging comments comments are content right write about it let them know engage with that person and then share different things share things that are within like linkedin posts share third party articles share your thought leadership maybe it's just text share um, a humorous or inspiring video, um, what that is. Just think about that engagement level. Um, and also these, um, whatever's popular and trending, just make sure that if you're trying to jump on the trending bandwagon, that it checks off all those boxes above it. Um, and then follow the rules of the platform. And that's where I do encourage you to download that uh, checklist from the research previously I sent. Um, and it follows the rules of the platform and you have to stay on top of it because it's constantly changing. And so these are just some ideas, just a little bit of inspiration, right? Quotes are really cool. Forbes does this, you know, quote of the day, watch what kind of quote of the day. So if you're going, oh, cool, look at, I've never seen that hashtag before. Jump in, before you start using hashtags, please jump in. Hashtags, um, no more than 10 on LinkedIn. I think it's the sweet spot somewhere between three and five hashtags. Um, quote of the day, jump in, go, oh, maybe that's something I'll start to do and add it to my content thing. Maybe I'll for every or Monday motivation, whatever that might be. Um, and also research. We talked about that. These guys, when it says promoted, you know that that's a sponsored post. If you're spending a lot of time doing research, maybe you want to spend a little money to boost it and um, to sponsored posts. Something that's already been up is one of the most effective LinkedIn. You just usually LinkedIn, it costs quite a bit to um, advertise, but check out your budget. 
um, if you write uh, uh, an article, you can do a long form article. And that's what I did here on the right hand side. I actually did a LinkedIn article, wrote a little bit about it, and then shared it out to my network. So that's something you can do as well. And then live video. If you're a creator, you have access to live, um, doing live events on LinkedIn. Um, and then just video content. People still like it. They're just not as engaged as it was a couple of years ago. It doesn't mean that, you know, LinkedIn um, is saying don't do video. It's just, it just just dropped a little bit in engagement. Um, and see how this person has mentioned a bunch of people. Hashtags typically are better actually at the end of the of your post. Um, just that's what I read. You'd have to play around that to find that out as well. So that um, World Economic Forum, check out that link. It's actually a video. I couldn't embed the video, but it's really cool how it goes through it. And then another recent one on the right-hand side on mine is this person who has a ton of followers in sustainability. Sustainability and communication is kind of what I love. She actually actively went out and found an infographic that I did years ago. 2015, I think I did this blog post, created this infographic sketch note, which was kind of fun. Anyway, she found it and she shared it with her entire network and it's just blown up and it's so exciting. So it's always neat when someone does that. And she mentioned me, did the hashtags, how she has her blog written is actually probably the ideal. See how the hashtags are at the end, mentioned the person, some little um, bullet points up there and she has a ton of comments on there so that was kind of a, a fun thing that I didn't actually do but this is speaks to the the crossover right it's your blogging it's your website it's engaging with LinkedIn or any of your social media you have to kind of work it all together because ultimately you want them to go back to your website or reach out to you so if you want them to reach out to you directly through LinkedIn, that's one thing, but uh, leverage your other platforms as well. And how do you build your network? Just, I've kind of mentioned all of this all the way along. Join groups, comment on people's posts, tag people, use those hashtags. Definitely stay in tune with people, but def and be authentic, right? Like then people are gonna see you and they're gonna wanna join you and those like-minded people. So if you're sharing certain content, all of a sudden, people are going to say, oh, I want to be part of your network. I want to learn more. And then don't forget to reach out to people one-on-one, -on -one, right, through their in-mail, which is what LinkedIn calls direct messages, um, and then even in person and send them over. And that's it. So that's us. LinkedIn, Emily and I are on LinkedIn. So please do come and, um, and join us and follow us. Check us out. You can actually, part of how we get, we build our LinkedIn people is by telling people that we're on there. We also have it on our website. So under the about section, you'll see our profiles, which also link over to LinkedIn. When we do speaking engagements, we encourage people to come and connect with us. All of those things help us build our network too. So just be consistent, be authentic and uh, move forward. So that's it.